Hello everyone, 12 Bravo here. It's uh, 2.40 in the morning and I'm up, I'm riled up because I just got in an argument with uh, one of my brothers um, that I love very much and uh, it just sucks, you know, sometimes you get in fights over things. There's just topics that shouldn't be discussed sometimes with certain people and uh, unfortunately things got heated and we yelled at each other and ended on a bad note, but um, you know, just probably need a break and, uh, you know, hopefully things will turn around. But uh, we're not here to talk about that. I am up at 2.40 in the morning and I thought of a good idea for a video would be uh, for any of you out there that are considering getting an espresso machine like this. So show you my setup. You got the vanilla. Got to have the hazelnut. And then we have a new guy on here we're trying out. We're trying out the pistachio. So that's my little coffee set up there. If you can see. And I got an almost empty bottle of salted caramel there. But I like the Monin syrups the best. Got my little cappuccino cups. My little espresso cups. I don't know what the scale's doing there. I never use that thing. But yeah, that's my setup. But anyways, I wanted to, uh, anyone that's thinking about getting a, an espresso machine uh, and you're confused by the options, you know, they've got ones like I have, which are, you know, kind of semi-automatic, you know, it grinds the beans for you uh, into the cup and then you put the, you know, portafilter in and you can see uh, in my setup videos of the Ninja, Ninja Lux Cafe how it all works. I'm not going to demonstrate it for you now, but, um, and so you basically got th these types of machines that are semi, and then you've got the super automatics, which are like, um, like the Juras and the, um, uh, the TK02, which I think is another one. And then there's a Phillips machine and then there's a KitchenAid machine. So, and they're called super automatics because, you know, at the press of a button, they can brew, a latte, cappuccino, espresso, without you having to do any work. Uh, the problem with those machines, there's there's pros and cons, but um, I'll give you myself for an example. I initially, uh, when I started looking at espresso machines, I kind of decided on the Philips Latte Go machine, the 5300 or whatever their top model is. And uh, I liked that it had a you know, big, nice, beautiful screen and um, you know, that you could make like all these different drinks with it and it would, you know, do the latte part of steaming the milk and, and everything and putting it in at the drink at the right time and all this. But then I further did some research and saw that, oh, it only does seven gram pucks. So it's only going to brew, uh, uh, you know, so much espresso and you can't change that. So, um, the nice thing about the Lux is I can brew double shots so I got a double shot basket right and I think that's what um, I want to say 17 grams I may be wrong but I'm not I don't remember correctly and then I got a quad shot basket which also doubles as a drip coffee if I want to do drip coffee but that's a quad shot if I want to make a quad shot of espresso so I have options um, But yeah, so the so the Phillips, the Latte Go in particular, only has one size and you can't change the size. You just have to brew twice if you want, you know, more coffee. Uh, it doesn't do drip coffee. It only makes espressos and lattes and, and cappuccinos, things like that. So I was prepared, you know, the, the Latte Go is like, I think it's like $1,200 for their top, for Phillips top model. And I was prepared, you know, to, to dive into that but um, when I started comparing that to the Ninja Lux, which is only $500, only $500 is still a lot of money. But when I compared it to the Ninja Lux, I was like, man, I can, all I got to do is a little bit of work and cleaning. And I have a lot more variety that I can do. 
And the thing about the super automatics is they do require cleaning and lubrication. And, you know, like every few months you're supposed to like remove the brew head out and clean it and everything else. So the super automatics are a lot more maintenance intensive. Like you have to do a lot more work. So you're going to work one way or the other. Uh, you're going to have to do something. Uh, cause if you don't maintain, maintain your super automatic, it'll just start gunking up and breaking on you. But, um, yeah, I didn't see any videos on the, on, on YouTube, uh, talking about, you know, super automatics versus this, you know, the self, you know, care machines or whatever you want to call them. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my decision. I don't mind making, uh, espressos or lattes. In fact, I've been playing barista to my family that's in town right now. Um, but then I finally got tired of doing, <laughs> I finally got tired of making coffees all day. So I showed, I showed them how to use it. And, uh, sorry, my nose is itchy. I showed them how to use it. And so that I don't have to keep making them all day. But, um, yeah, it's pretty easy. They, you know, they learn very quick and it's a, the Ninja Lux is a cafe. I, I mean, I hate to keep promoting it, but I'm just really impressed with the machine for $500. Uh, you, there's pretty much no other machine out there that can touch it at that price range. And I dare say even, even at higher price ranges, you know, the Brevels are a little nicer, you know, materials. It's, they're probably made a little bit better, you know, they probably have more longevity, like the Brevels that are like $900, $1,000, you know, for basically the same thing. You know, uh, you're paying twice as much for a better built unit that might last longer, but may or may not have all the features that the Ninja has. So I would definitely look at the Ninja Lux Cafe if you're looking at espresso machines. Um, there might be some coffee snobs out there that scoff at it and say like, oh, you know, it's not, you know, really a good espresso machine. But I've had several people over at my house and I've made lattes for them. They all loved them. Um, I enjoy them. I enjoy the taste. I'm not a coffee taster, but uh, expert. But uh, I enjoy the taste. I actually made some drip coffee today in it for the first time. And it, it was way better than a Keurig. You know, it's not like perfect or anything, but the drip coffee was still good. And uh, I'm very happy with the machine. So if you uh, have any questions or comments about super automatics versus, you know, the what I like to call the semi-automatics, um, leave it in the section below, the comment section, and uh, I'll try and help you out if you're trying to decide between a few machines because I did do some research into the auto, uh, super automatics. I looked at the Bosch which is like two grand. I looked at the Juras, which are, you know, like they start at like two grand. I looked at the Latte Go and um, yeah, I just, I didn't see why I should spend more than $500 when this machine is perfectly capable of giving me what I want. And I have to say it's one of the best purchases I've made in a while. And well, time will tell if it's, you know, if it lasts a long time or not. So, uh, Thank you guys for watching, and again, if you need my help, just fire it up in the comments, and I'll try and help you out, okay? All right, you guys stay safe out there. Take care.